Hey guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add these anime speed lines to your videos in just a few simple steps inside Premiere Pro. You will be able to enhance your footage and give it that energetic anime flair. So let's get started. All right, you can see on the timeline, I have already got a stock footage. You can use any footage that you like. First of all, I'm going to show you how to design an engaging animation for the anime speed line that incorporates a zoom in effect at the beginning and a zoom out effect at the end. Additionally, we will enhance the animation by adding rotation and a blur effect during both the initial zoom and the final zoom out phases. That's why we have to find a position where we want to add the anime speed line to the footage. In my case, I want to use this position for adding the anime speed line. This will be the beginning point of the anime speed line. Now we have to create a new adjustment layer inside the project panel. Here, we have to accept the same settings as the sequence. Now we can drag this adjustment layer from the project panel over to the timeline and place it on top of the video clip. Next, we have to find another position where we want to finish the anime speed line of the footage. In my case, I want to use this position to finish the anime speed line. This will be the end position of the anime speed line. Now let's increase the duration of the adjustment layer to this position. All right, the adjustment layer is ready. Now let's move over to the effects panel to apply some effects. Firstly, I am going to apply a Gaussian blur effect. Let's drag and drop the Gaussian blur effect onto the adjustment layer. After that, I'm going to apply another effect. This is a transform effect. Now let's go over to the effect controls panel to customize all the effects. Now, from the Gaussian blur effect, we have to create an ellipse mask by clicking on this icon. Once the ellipse mask is created, we can customize its shape and size to achieve a desired appearance, something like this. In the next step, we have to make the mask feather parameter value around 310. And then we have to enable the inverted property by clicking on this box. Now we have to create keyframes for the blurriness parameter by clicking on this stopwatch icon. And then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. Let's hold the shift key from the keyboard and then hit the right arrow key twice to skip 10 frames. Here we have to make the blurriness parameter value around 69. And then let's right click on the second keyframe and select ease out. After that, we have to move these two keyframes to the beginning of the adjustment layer. Let's create another keyframe with the blurriness parameter value 69, and then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. After that, let's make the blurriness parameter value around 0. And lastly, we have to move these two keyframes to the end position of the adjustment layer. In the next step, from the transform effect, we have to create keyframes for the scale parameter by clicking on this stopwatch icon. And then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. Here, we have to make the scale parameter value around 130, and then let's right click on the second keyframe and select Ease Out. After that, we have to move these two keyframes to the beginning of the adjustment layer. Let's create another keyframe with the scale parameter value 130, and then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. After that, let's make the scale parameter value around 100, and lastly, we have to move these two keyframes to the end position of the adjustment layer. In the following step, we have to create keyframes for the rotation parameter by clicking on this stopwatch icon. And then, let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. Here, we have to make the rotation parameter value around 10 degrees. And then, let's right click on the second keyframe and select Ease Out. After that, we have to move these two keyframes to the beginning of the adjustment layer. Again, let's create another keyframe with the rotation parameter value 10 degrees. And then, let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. After that, let's make the rotation parameter value around 0 degrees. And lastly, we have to move these two keyframes to the end position of the adjustment layer. All right, the creation of the zoom in and the zoom out animation with rotation and blur effects has been successfully completed. It looks great. All right, in the next step, we have to add the anime speed line on the video. I have already got an anime speed line animation overlay on my computer. You can download this anime speed line animation overlay using the link provided in the video description. After that, we can drag the speed line overlay from the project panel over to the timeline and place it on top of the adjustment layer. This overlay is designed in stunning 4K resolution, ensuring a high quality visual experience. To adjust its size for optimal display on your screen, simply right click on the overlay. From the context menu that appears, select the option labeled Set to Frame Size. This will automatically resize the overlay to fit perfectly within the dimensions of your project. After that, we have to cut the overlay at this position and remove the extra part. In the next step, let's move over to the Effect Controls panel and make sure the Speedline Overlay is selected. 
Now we have to create a keyframe for the opacity parameter by clicking on this stopwatch icon. Next, we need to make the opacity parameter value around zero. And then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. Here, we have to make the opacity parameter value around 100. After that, we have to move these two keyframes to the beginning of the speed line overlay. Again, let's create another keyframe with the opacity parameter value 100. And then, let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. After that, let's make the opacity parameter value around 0. And lastly, we have to move these two keyframes to the end position of the speed line overlay. Alright, now we are done, let's see how it looks now. It looks great. In the last step, I am going to show you how we can add a black and white effect instead of the Gaussian blur effect. Let's select the adjustment layer and we have to remove the Gaussian blur effect from the adjustment layer. Next, let's go over to the effects panel to apply an effect. This is a tint effect. Let's drag and drop the tint effect onto the adjustment layer. Next, move over to the effect controls panel to customize the tint effect. I'm going to leave the color as it is of the tint effect. After that, we have to create a keyframe for the amount parameter by clicking on this stopwatch icon. Next, we need to make the amount parameter value around zero, and then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. Here, we have to make the amount parameter value around 100. After that, we have to move these two keyframes to the beginning of the adjustment layer, and then let's right click on the second keyframe and select ease out. Again, let's create another keyframe with the amount parameter value 100, and then let's move the time indicator 10 frames forward. After that, let's make the amount parameter value around zero. And lastly, we have to move these two keyframes to the end position of the adjustment layer. All right, now we are done. Let's see how it looks now. By following these steps and incorporating the optional enhancements, you can add an anime speed line to your videos in Premiere Pro.